All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Chasing Tone podcast. I am Blake Wyland, and in this special edition, we call this edition the Brian Chills Outside While Eating a Cheeseburger and Blake Sits on the Other Side of the Country Hungry edition. <laughs> hello, Brian. Uh, hello. Wait, I thought I was Blake Wyland this time. Since oh. you did the inter- I thought you were going to be... I thought you were going to be me, and I was going to be you. No? Oh, is that how we were going to play this? <laughs> no, I'm just messing. Okay. No, but you're right. I totally am eating a burger. Or Actually, I'm not eating, but I'm preparing a burger to eat. And, uh, you know, it's 83 and sunny here today. I've been stuck inside my uh, my uh, man cave, you mm-hmm. know, the, the shop, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I really haven't seen much of the outside. And so I thought, you know what? Before the sun goes down this last hour, I'm actually going to go outside and see what it looks like whenever it's 83 degrees outside. There you go. And uh, so I thought, you know what? Nobody's home. I'm going to make me a burger. I'm probably going to grab a beer whilst I make said burger. And uh, and that's what I'm doing. All right. And we're going to, you know what? We're going to record a podcast while we're at it because because it's your show and you can do whatever you want. Right. And if if you don't like it, change the channel. That's right. You can go over to the ToneMob.com podcast where <laughs> you can listen to the episode with Robert Keeley who uh, ate a sandwich during that recording. So oh, there's lots oh, of – <laughs> I didn't know you had one with Robert. I got to listen to it. I got to listen to it. Oh, you'll like that one. That's a great episode. Is it up? Yeah, it's it's oh, that's kind of an old one by now. I think uh, – I don't remember. Maybe episode – 12 or something 13 it's it's back there but if okay. his name's on it you won't you won't miss it i i will hit that up after we get off of this this podcast it's very I, nice I, I like listening to real podcasts every now and then real you know? <laughs> well then you should probably tune into uh, something like i don't know 60 cycle hum or something if you want to listen to a real <laughs> podcast i always feel like this podcast is kind of like uh you know just me at let's like brian after hours mm-hmm. you know what does Brian do in his spare time? Uh, well, he makes burgers, drinks a uh-huh. beer, and looks at the sun. At it, you know, you know, amazed how it's still shining. That's not you know, you know that's not a bad way to spend your off your off hours. That's a pretty uh, solid hey. American use of your time. Right. And I have to I have to apologize for anyone who can hear it in the background. Uh, there's a neighbor, and he's a distant neighbor too. But apparently, he's got a very loud mower. Mm-hmm. I think I think he's got like a 454 V8 in that thing because <laughs> I swear it, you know with an oversized camshaft and headers right. and, and nitrous and everything because it mm-hmm. I swear it sounds like he's uh, he's mowing some serious grass and it's like super loud and he's like a half mile away or something so wow yeah well I mean I live in the middle of nowhere so yeah well that's cool. <laughs> Well, I can't hear it on this end if that's any consolation. So hopefully the listeners aren't too annoyed right now. But with that said, with all that said, mm-hmm. you had a couple interesting topics that I think uh, we should tear into and then Indeed. promptly, uh, promptly run away from, like we normally Indeed. do. Mm-hmm. Indeed. So, so let's let's hit up with probably the most interesting thing I think we okay. can talk about, and that is uh, how likely is it for a new pedal builder to break into the pedal building business? Hmm. You know, I think that depends on a lot of variables. I think for a new builder to like make a name for themselves and kind of be around as a sustainable entity, I think they have to have a, the product quality has to be there. That's just not even an option. If you I, have mediocre product quality, you're going to die shortly. Like Honestly, I, th- I think almost everybody, at least that I've seen, almost everybody coming out and trying to trying to do it, this stuff's really good. Like, mm-hmm. I, I really haven't seen that much crap with the exception of a few I won't name. Yeah. But, like, for the most part, like, everybody's stuff is pretty damn good, you know? Because yeah. it has to be. Or Yeah. I mean, I mean... <laughs> the- it's, that, you know, no one's, I mean, there's not a whole, like, you know, back in 2006, seven ish, eight ish, whatever, there was a lot of guys, uh, you know, buying, build your own clone circuit mm-hmm. boards or even kits and, and trying to break into business that way. And I, I don't see a whole lot of that stuff anymore. I mean, people, you know, people are drawing their own boards and, you know, making their own stuff. And it's cool. It's a cool time. It really yeah. is. Because there's so many great things out there. Yeah, for sure. 
So I mean, like, with that said, like, so okay, you can't you can't really separate yourself by having a high quality product anymore. That's just mandatory. That's what you have to do. Right. So yeah, yeah if you don't, you're basically this just your hobby. Yep. You know? Yep. So you got that established. I think the next thing that's just like a foundation. You just have to do that. Like right. the next thing it's, is it's it's like the sizzle in your burger. You know, Ooh, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm looking at this burger right now thinking I may have to pause this podcast and chow down on some burger. <laughs> oh, man, you, you might have to pause it because I, I, otherwise I'll start eating my phone. <laughs> I will. I will <laughs> abstain from chomping in everyone's ear. I promise. <laughs> I don't there's, promise, but I'll try. There's a mute button. You can just listen to me ramble and eat your burger. And then in the meantime, like that's right, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> ah, very good, very good. Anyway, anyway, so pedal builders, new businesses. Yeah, so so pedal builders and businesses. So yeah, I think the uh, the next thing they have to do is, and I'm just kind of talking from a business perspective, you have to have a unique presentation of some sort. Like, why is your thing? cooler than the other guy's thing now it could be because you got a you know unique a unique a truly unique product that hasn't came out before which is oh. tougher to do <laughs> or, or i might can i if i can interrupt here for a second or it might do. be that you took a, a pedal that looked like something that's very popular and expensive and you put something really kick-ass in place of it no one expected it that's i still say pelican <laughs> like three thumbs up man that is completely <laughs> completely awesome i love it Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> uh, he's going to love that. He, he's That's going to make him feel warm and fuzzy inside. I know that because he's one of my best friends. So uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, but that kind of goes back to that like unique form of presentation, and that's part of the reason we kind of you know brainstormed that idea. So mm -hmm. I think that is something you have to get people talking about it. And you, yes. can't, do, you can't do that by just putting a – Tube screamer in a green box. Like, that's right. no one cares. No, I mean, you know, putting on my marketing hat here, you have to build a story around every pedal, around every product that you have. Everything <laughs> has to have some sort of story to be. You know, the person buying your pedal needs to, like, identify with the story around it. So, you know, like, for, for example, for the Pelican uh, stuff, I mean, it's uh, it looks like uh, the mythical $30,000 overdrive, right? Mm -hmm. But you kick it on, and it's totally the radical opposite end of that. Like, it's nowhere near that. And that's – so that's the cool story. You know, it's like I can put this on my board and be like, oh, man, how would you get one of those? And you're like – Ha <laughs> yeah. ha! You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's like it's a great story, you know. Mm -hmm. In the same way that, that if I had a, you know, let's say a, if I had a pedal look just like a Strymon or something, and I, you know, it made fart noises or something like that. I mean, that would I don't know if that'd be sellable, but it would definitely <laughs> be a funny story, you know. Or maybe pig squeals. Or pig squeals. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I would probably call it the ham it pedal. Yes. yes. I want. Oh boy, that's great. Where'd you come up with that? Is that a, is that a, I, is is that a new product you're well, coming out with? Well, I trade. Uh, it's actually uh, something I've been working on in my spare time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The Hammett. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Guar guaranteed to inspire all the best Metallica licks ever. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Metallica lick. Actually, it probably fit. There's this. Uh, there's this grindcore band that I remember some kids in high school, they had the t-shirts of. I never listened to them, but mm -hmm. something tells me the Hammett distortion would fit in, or the Hammett, what you, was it? The Hammett pedal? Hammett, or? Hammett wah pedal. Because Hammett wah pedal, that's right. If you're making a ham it pedal, you know, <laughs> um, you know something that makes ham being you know, from a pig, and something that uh -huh. makes pig sounds, <laughs> then uh, you want it in a wah pedal, that way you can control the squeal. You gotta be able oh. to control the, it's all about controlling that squeal. That's that. true. That's true. So where I was going with that is like that would fit in good if you were playing uh, Pig Destroyer licks. That would be the band you would probably play the Hammett Wah on. That's my assumption. That that would yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh wait, I think either his mower died or blew up or something because it just shut off in the middle of nothing. Is he just what? sitting there in his in his field? Well, I can't see him from here because he's a ways away. But I can I could hear it, and it just it sounded like he he might have actually like fell down a cliff. I don't know. 
Did he pour but, the NOS to it and it grenaded his engine? <laughs> it, you know, maybe so. I don't know. So he anyways. leaned out and he fried a piston and he put a hole in that dare dad gum piston. <laughs> right in that 454 was a dope. You know, oh man, that guy got a flattened camshaft and all kinds of valve lift going on. I tell you what, he shouldn't have put that much knockers on there. Well, you know, you make a joke about this, but actually uh, a good friend of mine, my neighbor, this mm-hmm. a couple of houses down. Uh, he, he bought one of those little mini bikes that looks like a Harley Davidson. I don't know if you've seen those in your oh, yeah. part of the country or not. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he's like a big gearhead, right? So he's got like a lot of old cars and stuff that he fixes up. And that's just, that's his thing. Sweet. And um, so you, you got to supercharge it, right? You got I mean, to make a supercharger on the mini bike, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, of course. It's, so like, he totally souped it up and it's, ridiculously fast for a little mini bike that looks like a Harley Davidson. It's kind of funny in a way. <laughs> I would totally ride that. I love that idea. <laughs> I was like, why did you do that? And he's like, because I could. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but that has nothing to do with pedals. So No, it doesn't. Uh, so basically, we were we were kind of, we talked briefly about, you know, can a new company stand out and like survive? Uh, yes, they can, but it's much more difficult than just making a pedal and saying, look at my take on the whatever. You have to have something interesting for people to latch on to. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And I will say that, I mean, it's obviously more competitive than it ever has been, and it's probably going to keep getting more competitive. But, uh, you know, as far as breaking through, and I actually uh, did the Ruffian podcast this week, and we brushed on this as well. So anybody mm-hmm. out there, if you're into gear and DIY type stuff, check out the Ruffian podcast. Very, very cool stuff. Dan's a great guy. Yes. Um, you know, I mean, it's uh, – I, was t- I totally lost my train of thought where I was going there. Hold on. It's, got, it's coming back. St- mm-hmm. Wait a minute. It's coming back. Okay, mm-hmm. so if – if you're if you're the guy that's you know trying to break into the business and you have all this other competition around you that's that's you know trying to do the same thing as you are, how are you going to stand out? You know, yeah. And, and we touched on that briefly. It, it could be the story around a product. You could be a really eccentric guy, you know, that people are kind of they kind of gravitate to and they identify mm-hmm. with. Um, and then another thing is just really building the customer base. You know, let's say you start out with. 10 or 15 people that like your stuff. Well, you know, grow that. And how do you grow that? I mean, you, you, you do, um, you basically just be a nice dude to be around. You know, you answer a lot of questions. You put out a lot of content. Uh, you know, that's, that's why I do a lot of YouTube stuff all the time is cause I, I, I actually enjoy doing the content quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, you know, you just put out content for people to absorb and learn from and like, and then those people kind of eventually, if they like your stuff and like how you talk and they like how, who you are, then they kind of tend to become your customers. And then – so you keep doing all this kind of stuff like that and then you're like, hey, I got a pedal for sale. You should buy it. You know? And um, I mean you phrase it differently than that. But really that's <laughs> – that's like in, in the 30-second version, that's, that's kind of the way it works. You know, you build a customer base and then you sell them a pedal. Um, it, but I mean, you know, it has to be a good pedal. So let's, you know, let's let's take a break from the fuzz faces. You know, let's take a break from the tube screamers. And me being hypocritical here, of course, we have a tube screamer clone, which I <laughs> fought very hard against ever putting out. <laughs> um, but it's cool though. So well, I, I, and I did it because we had just so many people asking us to do something. Like, oh my gosh, We're like another seriously another tube screamer? Really? Please oh, don't make and- me. Wait, and Brian, and why did you have all those people asking you that? Because you built a customer base. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so that's the, that's another part of it. So when your customers say what they want you to do, you do what the customers want, right? Mm-hmm. So like if they said, I would love to see what you would do with a tube screamer circuit. If I was like, screw you guys, I'm going to make I'm not, I'm gonna make the anti-tube screamer, man, just because you want it, you know? <laughs> Like that's 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 probably not a good way to go about it either, you know. I'm gonna produce a a super high gain fuzz that scoops out all the mitt. Oh wait, that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, and it's only gonna sound good with the toe knobs in one position. 
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I love the uh, like. I love the big muff stuff. Oh, I do too. So I, much. I love. I love modifying it more than I like. You know, I don't know the stock circuit. Nothing against Mike Matthews, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great circuit, man. It's a great flush circuit. Totally uh-huh. different than what other people have done. Mm. For I mean, in its time, you know, I mean, of right. course, everybody now there's has big muff clones, but. Uh, you know, in, in his time, it was it was quite different. Oh, so. for sure, and that's a different sound. That's a different sounding. You know, yeah. Back when it came out, that was the. F- there was nothing that sounded like that. Right. So, uh, I love Big Muffs. I really do. Yep. <clears throat> yep. So, I- any other advice that you would uh, offer to the prospective person who wants to build a you know make a business selling guitar pedals? Uh, I think one thing to be really, really clear on, and it's funny that I say this like I've sold so many. You're the guy who sold pedals, but this is kind of what I'm gathering from being in the industry now at this point is really you need to manage your expectations. Like just because you are putting even, you know, you can speak to this just because you're putting out lots of pedals every month doesn't mean you're going to be a gazillionaire and i think some people still have that perception like well, that, you know I what actually, i mean and i actually I, again uh, you know it's not like i'm you know making any money off affiliate sales from the ruffian podcast but we actually hit on this as well and uh yeah i mean you have to you it, okay don't ever go into the music business in general at all whether you want to be an artist, whether you want to be a session player, whether you want to make guitar gear or guitars or amps or whatever, don't ever do that with the idea of I'm going to do this to make a buttload of cash because it's just not going to happen. No. It's not going to happen. Uh, you know, the, the, the most successful of, of the successful people are not rolling in dough. I mean, really, like this, you know, if we wanted to make a bunch of money, we would like when we went into banking or insurance or something like that. Mm-hmm. We, we, you know, we do this because like, we like the idea of going to bed on Sunday night and looking forward to Monday morning. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> we like when we go to bed at Monday night thinking, damn it, it's already 11 o'clock and I've got to get some sleep so I can get up tomorrow morning and do it again. You know, yeah. it's, it's that, it's that that has to drive you. Um, you know, and then hopefully in the process you can make enough money to pay your bills and feed your family. Right. So, and, I mean, yeah, that, I mean, and, and like, to be clear, it shouldn't be like, you're going to starve, but you'll be happy. It's not like that. You can be totally comfortable and, and like, ha- you know, raise a family, but you're not going to be, you know, Bill Gates. No, no, so. no one's driving Ferraris. Well, I mean, if they are driving Ferraris and they got a loan for it, and that was really stupid on their part. But, <laughs> I mean, yeah, like no one, no one makes, you know, $500,000 a month. It's like, I don't know what to do with this 500 grand. I think I'll buy a Ferrari again. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, yeah. That, um, yeah, it doesn't happen like that at all. No. At all. So it, it's, you know, so if that's your intention, I, I'm going to squash that right now because you're probably, not, you're not even probably, it ain't going to happen, dude. Sorry. Not going to happen. Nope. No. No, and, and actually, um, like in a, you know, we kind of touched on this in a older episode where uh, Lance Seymour from Gear Talk and uh, Ryan from 60 Cycle Home and I did a podcast from NAM, and we t- R- Lance touched on that briefly. He was like, "There's not really a ton of millionaires floating around in the gear industry, and if they are, they probably made their money somewhere else and started doing this because they loved it." Like, yes, <laughs> and, and there and I do know guys like that. There are guys that you know they were you know NASA engineers or whatever. And, or, I mean, I'm just throwing something out there. Mm-hmm. You, you know, like they made a bunch of money doing something and they're like, okay, I've got enough money. Now I'm going to do what I love. I'm going to build amps or guitars or whatever. Mm-hmm. I, and I do, I do know some of those guys. Yeah. Right. For sure. So, I mean, that, yeah, that's, but yeah. So people may see these, you know, these people and think, well, he's got a lot of money. Well, he didn't make it here. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. you know. He nope. make, you know, it's and I, I we say this I just I just I've talked to people that think well that guy's rolling in the cash so of course he can do that and it's like well no that's not how this works uh, sorry I wish it was but it's not um, yeah it's just you're right it's just not I mean it's uh, it's got to be a labor of love you, you got to do it because you love doing it and you can't imagine doing anything else you know what I mean and 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 
you're willing to do it night and day, you know, 18, 19 hours a day. You're willing to live, breathe, eat, and sleep it. You, you know what I mean? Like you're willing to not watch Lost on Netflix or whatever at night, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, you're like, dude, this is going to be your thing. You're just going to totally dive into it with everything you have. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's how you do it, mm -hmm. you know? And then, uh, and then you make friendships and you network with other people and you do the NAMs and you do the guitar shows and, um, you know, you need to know some stuff about business a little bit. So if you don't know anything about business, then either take a college class somewhere, but I, I probably would just read a couple different books. It's basically the same thing without the cost. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what I mean? So, and there's kind of a hack to that too. I mean, you can read a book and that's fine. And I'll probably bore a few people here, but if you can read a book and take notes while you're reading a book, it, then you'll learn it a lot better. So take notes, even though you don't have to turn it into anyone. So yeah, that's what I did. Lots of books, lots of notes, uh, barely graduated high school. Barely, and I had two PE classes, so I could graduate high school. So, yeah, it can happen. There you yep. go. And that's how you do it. There. <laughs> we there were talking about, is it possible? The answer is, yes, it's possible, and here's the nutshell version of how to make it work. Right. So, right. Yeah, there's a lot more to it than that, and if you want to know all the answers, just email Robert Keeley. Oh. <laughs> yes, exactly. And with, with the, yes, definitely. And say and tell him that Brian Wampler and Blake Wyland told everyone to ask him these questions. Yes. <laughs> He's never going to speak to us again. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get a kick out of Robert's a good guy. Yeah, he is. Uh, so, so that was that. Mm, I, that's I mean, that. we could Topic. really, we could like start a, you know, a whole podcast on that in general, but. I, you know, marketing but, music 101 podcast with Blake Wyland and some other guy who builds pedals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's how it would be built. I'm sure that's how that would work. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> All right. So are we ready to move on to topic number two? I think we can. I think we can. Or dose as my, uh, Spanish, Spanish friends say. There you go. Um, and I can say that because my daughter's Guatemalan, so how about that? Well, there uh, you go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, okay, so is the future of guitar gear heading towards software? And uh, you know, and I don't say that like your guitar is going to become software. I say, are we moving away from the day that people are lugging amps around and are now using, you know, a, a software program of some sort, whether it be on a phone, whether it be something like Fractal, whether you know, and so on and so forth. Like, are we moving away from that? Um. Hmm. I. 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 This is a tough one for me because I, I really like, you know, the old way of doing things, you know. But I really do believe that in 10 years or less, the majority of what we do will be heavily digital. Uh, just kind of like what happened with recording, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. al almost everyone doesn't record on tape anymore. They record into their computer for obvious reasons. And I think the future of guitar gear is headed that way. And I think that will, that will be the case. I, I really do believe that. Um, I don't, I don't like the idea because it just has a funny taste to me, but I, I, I think once it gets there, it'll be, it'll be wonderful actually. So, so then we can kind of tie in the last subject, which is new guys, new, new people that are, you know, in the process of wanting to build a pedal business, learn, digital stuff yes you have Not, to everybody knows the analog world learn digital Mm-hmm. yep well, i mean just look at some of the stuff that's coming out just yeah. just last year look at the new alexander stuff that's coming out the new empress reverb uh just there's it's just like and this this is like this is crazy stuff i mean the the empress reverb is going to be so cool they're already like starting their forum up and, and asking people what new reverb sounds do they want them to create so you can download it from their website and upload it to this pedal. Just like kind of like what TC does with the tone print stuff. It's just, right. it's, it's crazy. Well, 
Or is it kind of like the H? I haven't really actually. I haven't dove into it much. Is it kind of like the H nine type of thing, or? Yeah, it's sort of like that. It's 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 a MIDI control. I I can't even remember all the features. The, uh, it's got so much that it can do. But yeah, it's very much like like the H nine, but just strictly for reverb for the time being. I'm guessing they're going to use that platform to do other things in the future, just based on how in depth it is. Um, hmm. I don't know that I've never talked to those guys. This that's pure speculation on my part, but, uh, um, you know, it's, okay, it's so, a really cool looking unit. <clears throat> so, okay. So you personally, I know you, you play at the band every now and then, right? Mm hmm. Do you record anything? Mm hmm. When you record, whether it be, you know, uh, uh let, let's say you're recording at home at night. Are you okay. micing, are you micing an amp? Or are you, um, you know, are you uh, running through something digital based? Uh, everything that that I've done has been miking an amp. Um, however, uh, on the same subject, I was just talking with uh, Jay Leonard Jay about this, uh, and he was talking about he just got a new uh, Sure Reactive Load. Have you seen those? I have not. No. They're they're kind of a a direct box that. This is really simplified, but like the gist of it is that the load will kind of react differently to the amp, um, kind of like in the way that a speaker does, if that makes any sense. Um, it does. It does. So it's an impulse response? Yes. 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 That's the word I was looking for. Um, okay. So basically, they, they have the reactive load, and then he runs it into, um, into his computer into a cab emulator of some sort. He kind of picks whatever he wants for that particular, because it's using a real, you know, tube amp into the reactive load into a cab emulator. And uh, he's just, he was just raving about the sounds he was getting and how easy it was. And he's silent recording, you know, um, which for, you know, the guy in a house, that's, it doesn't get any better than that. I mean, that's right. perfect. Or or, I mean, you know, if you're, if you're doing a gig and you have to throw some stuff in the cab somewhere, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, who in the world wants to throw a twin reverb into a cab? <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that stuff, I mean, it, that comes in very handy. So, and I'm wondering, like, at what point are, are we, are we going to get to this, this, uh, I don't know, th this line in the sand where, like, okay, like, this twin reverb weighs, like, 8,000 pounds, and, you know, this this uh, software program I'm using or this app or whatever, whatever it is at that time, mm -hmm. like, sounds 99.9999999% the same. I'm just going to sell the twin reverb, you know, and use this other gadget. Right. Well, I mean, you it's know? kind of the same thing that we've we've talked about with, like, getting an amp in a box pedal or actually lugging five amps to a gig. You know, it's kind of mm -hmm. the same thing, really. Like most people kind are going to go, you know, give me the amp in the box. Like it, it's it, close enough. That's true. But in the mm -hmm. same way that, you know, you know, people got tired of walking, so they used horses. And <laughs> right. now people use airplanes, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, same sort of thing, but just a far more advanced version, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so. I, I think it's going to be – it will it will be the way of the future. I mean – let, let's be like, this is what I'm envisioning happening. I'm envisioning in, I don't know what kind of time frame, but that you'll be able to run something like an amp into the reactive load into your phone out into the house, like PA system. You know what I mean? And, and have 99% of what you need. It may not be exact, but it'll be close. Because, I mean, the phones, the phones are getting ridiculous with what you can do now. So, are you talking about telephones? Not like rotary phones where you <laughs> have to like spin the dial to dial up, kind of like what I have in my house. So it's uh, like a party line thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just I'm talking like your your iPhone or your iPad or something. You know, I think eventually we'll have the processing power needed to run this kind of stuff, and the algorithms will get advanced enough that this will just be much more portable and. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of something I see happening. And, you know, I, I, I agree to a point. But I, I think that I think the big change is going to come out whenever 
someone somewhere creates a program or app that makes it very easy for the DIY community to do it without learning a lot of uh, intense um, – what's the word I'm looking for? Like coding and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically like coding. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. so, so in other words, it's like drag and drop. You know what I mean? Yeah. So w- once you can like drag and drop something – it, 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 and it makes it easy for the entire community of people that want to do it, then, uh, I mean, I think that's when everything gets really big and really fast and, and, and immense growth, growth happens then, right. I think. I, I agree. Well, I mean, let's look at what happened with the FE1 platform, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Every, everyone, and for those who don't know what in the world we're talking about, FE1 is a chip – and it's 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 also called the spin chip, mm-hmm. and it basically it basically uh, you know you get it and it has like nine or ten programs already pre-installed. So you like your reverb, your chorus, your phase, your echo, etc. But so you can use those stock programs, but you know like like Nuneberger uses a lot. Is it Nuneberger? New, new, new neighbor, right? New neighbor. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, there you go. I, said, yeah, I, I think Nuna- you said Nuna Burger because you're <laughs> said, eating a burger. I said Nuna Burger looking at my burger. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, Bri- Brian, I'm totally sorry, man. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> that's all, so good. <laughs> <laughs> so it's this, this new fan daggle Nuna Burger thing. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyways, so yeah, I mean, so you could do like it, the coding isn't. I don't know. It's not drastically that much harder, and there's a ton of tutorials that really show, you know, type this in whenever you want this to happen, that type of thing. There's a lot of stuff like that around, um, but it's still it's still not drag and drop. And there was a company a few years ago, and I'm trying to remember what the name of it was. And he was trying to develop a drag and drop feature. Well, you hmm. had a you had a uh, you know you had a pedal. You plug it into your computer, and it was very much a drag and drop. You know, you want chorus. You drag it over from you know the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen into this bank, and boom, you got chorus. Wow. So yeah, and, and uh, I don't. I talked to him. This this has been man. This has been eight or nine years ago. I don't. I don't think everything ever happened with it because he had some very, very fancy and sophisticated job, and he's like, yeah, I just don't have time to mess with guitar stuff. <laughs> 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 you know. So, and I understand that, but it was a. Uh, I don't know. There's, there's got to be someone at some point in time will do this, you know, because yeah. there's a need. There's, there's a need, and someone has a skill set to do this. So, and when you do, uh, just hit up Brian at WamplerPedals.com. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, um, you can send your applications to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> hey, if you got that skill set, send your applications to Blake at Tom Bob. <laughs> we'll, figure it, we'll figure out something, buddy. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so. All right. So that, so, and that's all I got to say about that. Uh huh. All right. As Forrest says. Um, right. I don't really have anything to add to that either other than – so to wrap up what we could have wrapped up in in two minutes, what we did in 30, um, can new companies break through the noise? Yes, they can. Uh, They just have to be different and have a unique uh, selling proposition. And are we going to move into more digital-based guitar stuff? The answer is clearly yes. It's already happening. So – to sum up. All right, then. And so now, th- now that we've solved all the world's problems. <clears throat> right? um, well, there's still this world hunger thing, but I was just going to send everybody to your house to eat burgers, so that'll be fine. You'll, you'll take care of that. Um, <laughs> I'll split it with all of them. Yeah. I'll, cu- <laughs> I'll cut it into billions. We'll be fine. Yeah. You'll be, just, this cow <laughs> will live on through us. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, so I, I will say. So, if anyone out there has questions, email podcast at wamperpedals dot com. Mm-hmm. And Blake, since you started this lovely podcast today, yes, you get you get to end it, my friend. Oh well, thanks, Brian. And if you guys want to, uh, basically, like laugh at me, you can find me on all the social media stuff. Hit up tonemob.com. It's there. There's a podcast where you can hear me ramble uh, even more than I did today. And uh, yeah, that's that.
So, all right. It, oh, and you know what? what? Stop if you're if you're driving right now or if you're at work. Just stop whatever you're doing. Tell your boss you're gonna take a break. Leave mm-hmm. an iTunes review that says something positive for us. You know, that there way you we go. Can, we can continue to keep growing. People will see us whenever they type in a guitar podcast on the iTunes or whatever. Like that mm-hmm. would help us if if you want to help actually help us. And you know, uh, we do these for free. I, I I don't pay Blake. Blake doesn't pay me. So. You know, this is we do this out of love and because it's fun, you know. So, it, you know, please put a review out there of some sort, preferably with five or six stars. Even though there's only a five star minimum, <laughs> try, try for six. Try for six if you can. No, that now that doesn't mean to leave a five star and then a one star. That would not be good. <laughs> yeah, don't don't do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yes, so. and then I will. I'm gonna piggyback off that. Uh, sure. Tell your friends. That's another super awesome thing you can do it you know you know you know what if, if you're a younger kid go ahead and load this podcast onto your like your parents phone ah. and that, you know what i mean and so yeah. they're like what what is this thing playing on my phone and you're like no nah, <laughs> it's uh it's it's gonna tell you how to you know it's gonna tell you how to live a healthier life or something right and you know <laughs> just just do that you know yeah that'll work that'll work <laughs> And then you can Snapchat your friends about it or snap. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can you can do the Snapstagram or whatever you call it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the Snapstagram. That's what it is. Exactly. So all right. So with that said, Blake, I bid you adieu. Adieu, good sir. <laughs>